PS5, check. Thousand dollar 4K monitor with HDR, check. It's time to play a mobile game. Bleach Brave Souls came out a couple of days ago on PlayStation 4, so it's time for another episode of Globku vs Mobile Games. This game originally came out in 2016, so most people already know what it's all about. It's a gotcha. Now, I've made it my mission to give all anime games a fair shot here on the channel. I once thought that all gacha games were bad, but in came Genshin Impact and it took over my life for a few months. To me, the gacha systems will always exist in a place of other systems that could be better for players. But if it's what makes a game profitable and gets developers paid and allows the game to be supported for a long time, it's maybe a compromise that I can get behind. As long as there is an actual game to play and the gacha system doesn't get too much in the way of doing that. Which is why I sunk so many hours into Genshin while ignoring the whole gacha side of things. You can enjoy so much content for free, and I like that content, it's fun to play. I also like the content in My Hero Academia The Strongest Hero, for example, but in that case the gacha stuff really got in the way of me playing it. It felt like the game didn't want to be played most of the time. On the opposite side of that, we also had another My Hero game, Ultra Impact, which definitely had very friendly gacha systems that didn't get in the way too much, but there was barely any game beyond it. You play so you can pull for characters, you grind so their numbers go up, in order to pull more and get even higher numbers. That's not a game to me, it's just playing gacha to play more gacha, but it's disguised as an RPG because it has numbers. So it's time to see what Bleach Brave Souls is all about, as I never played the original, and how good is this port to the PS4. I've got my gamer subs ready, if you want to know why gamer subs, check out the link down below and let's begin. Now, why is there a circle at the center of the screen? Did they not even remove the symbol to tap in order to skip, but they did add a square to skip the button at the top? Oh, oh, that's my cursor! Why was my cursor in the cutscene? Okay, I can select the global server, all Asia or Japan, nothing in between. Input my name, oh. Good thing I've been learning Japanese, I can do this. Gu do bu ku Gurobku. Technically, this should be in katakana, not hiragana, but I'm calling this a win. And we're in. We're reliving the Bleach story. It is told through this visual novel style cutscene, and I've run into this type of storytelling a lot in the past, especially as I ranked Naruto games, and I really don't get it. If you want to relive the Bleach story, watching the show again is a thousand times better than this. There's no point in spending so much time and resources to develop a bunch of cutscenes that look like this. But sure, this isn't hard to make at all, and that's why it exists this way in game, and not something a bit more high production. But Still, they have so many of these visual novel scenes that a significant portion of development time was dedicated to making all of it. Reliving a story in a video game has to do something extra for the player, either give them a different perspective or put them in control of a scene. This visual novel style does absolutely nothing for me, I don't know how long I'll go without skipping these. Gameplay seems okay, it's an action game, you walk around, you've got an attack button and a special attack, I can see the potential in this. Wait, what is this soundtrack? Okay, I gotta give them props for this one. They give you a choice of a free character at the start. More gacha games should do this. The way gachas usually work to get you used to the system is they give you a free pull when you create a new account. And what you get is just as random as any normal pull. So what a lot of players do is restart their save until they get a good free pull to kickstart their progress. Bleach Brave Souls just bypasses this painful process by giving you a choice, and I love this. I chose Yoruichi, and she's got a lot more special moves, so I think if you have a 5 star character, you'll just have more to do in game. And in case it wasn't obvious, here you go, it is a gacha. Login bonuses, icons everywhere to click and redeem free stuff, a thousand currencies, I've got 97 gifts, like what the hell? Oh, and I guess all the trophies are in Japanese. Wow, they didn't even bother translating. Wait, 50 bears? You're giving me 50 of the same character? I guess some of these will be sacrifices to level up other characters, they have to be. 10 minutes of redeeming garbage, I'm finally returning to the game, and uh, I'm I'm skipping cutscenes now, I'm done with these. Difficulty is way too easy. I get that it's supposed to start easy and ramp up eventually, but I am bored out of my mind already. Let's do some summons, hopefully we get something different to play. 5 star Rukia, nice. 5 star Champagne Shuhei, okay. White Ichigo. Cool. I've unlocked a few modes, uh, let's try out Arena. You're just gonna give me a 6 star character for entering Arena mode? Wait, 6 stars? The maximum isn't 5? 
Got it. So this is sort of a PvP mode where two teams of three defeat each other as well as some NPCs to score points. Whoever scores more points wins. I'm recording this two days after it came out on PlayStation 4. No one is playing it. It's completely empty already. I guess we'll try again tomorrow. There's also a versus mode where you make a team of three and just watch the battle happen. I remember something similar in The Strongest Hero, so let's try it. Yeah, it's way too soon for me. So besides the story, they also have sub-stories, which are groups of three or four missions with visual novel cutscenes as well. And they tell original stories. There are so many of these, but I guess it makes sense. The game's been out for six years. Shuhei does shoot champagne, by the way. This is very, very silly. Oh, and I also got Christmas Nell. She throws presents. They definitely had fun with the movesets. They're not super elaborate. They're all pretty basic, to be honest, but they definitely had fun. At this point, I'm not only skipping cutscenes, I've also turned on auto, so the character just plays by itself. I think this character just plays better than me. These missions have gotten boring really fast at this point. I I'm already done playing the game and it's only been an hour. Found a level up menu, let's try maxing out a character. I've seen all of these level up mechanics before. There's a soul tree with talents that you use money and some specific items to unlock. You get these items by completing certain missions, same as a thousand other gacha games. There are XP crystals to raise a character's level and you sacrifice other characters to ascend the character you want and raise their level cap. Guess what the 50 bears are for? And now we kill everything in one hit. If this was already too easy, then at least now it goes faster. I am now two hours into this game. I've played over 10 city levels. They're all exactly the same, the same layout and everything, and a couple of levels in the park. But it almost feels like a change of skin because the layouts actually don't change that much. I'm starting to think I've seen all the content there is to this game. Well, at least we're destroying in the versus battles now. <laughs> And as a port from mobile to console, they did some minor work here, like sometimes you'll see a button shortcut to start a mission or retry something, but it's very inconsistent because then you've got other menus where you have no button shortcuts at all and you've got to move the cursor to point and click. In-game it works fine, the action, the button mapping, it's all great, it feels responsive. Maybe it didn't need the big buttons on the bottom right like you have in mobile. A redesign for console would have been nice, but hey, it's a 2016 game. What did you expect? Effort? All right, we're too high level for this. Let's try looking for a challenge in raids. Let's start with hard mode. My characters are still on auto and Ichigo is just cleaning up. So no challenge yet. We beat that easy. Let's go to the hardest level. Okay, Ichigo, if, if you could stop standing in the puddles, that would be great. Yeah, I, I gotta take control here. This isn't hard exactly. It just takes longer to defeat the enemies. Like they all do the same stuff they were doing in the first levels. It's just the numbers went up and they've got more health and deal more damage. An uncultured gamer would say, well, that's how RPG work. No, that's how gotchas work. RPGs usually have more to it than that. This is just bigger numbers. It doesn't help that my character isn't the right affinity to defeat these guys, so it takes longer because of that. You may have noticed the Fire Emblem triangle at the top, which is also in so many gotchas. In hindsight, I should have picked a boss that is weak to Ichigo, but we're here now. Finally made it to Mayuri, and he's doing his ultimate attack. Wait, what? That hits full screen? Okay, Ichigo, you're my final hope. I'm actually dealing very good damage here. <gasps> no, not again. I, sh I should go to bed. Hi. Day 2 of Bleach Brave Souls and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do in this game. I'll say this, as a gacha, it gives you a bunch of currency and items from the get-go. I've played gachas and they're usually very generous at the start, but this, this is beyond that. This feels like someone turned on Cheat Engine and they just typed a bunch of big numbers into your resources, which I definitely appreciate. I haven't felt the need to grind at all so far. The only currency they don't flat out give you is the one you need to summon. You gotta work for those orbs, but once you pull a decent character, maxing them out shouldn't be a problem. I've I maxed out Ichigo, he was my only 6 star so far, and I've done all I can for 2 other characters as well, I need to pull more characters to ascend them further though. This generosity, so to speak, might be because this is a 2016 game, it's been out for a very long time, they've made their money's worth out of the grinding and the leveling up, and now they just give you a bunch of stuff for free, so you might be more inclined to pull for more characters, which I think is fair. Or maybe this is the way it always worked, I have no way of knowing. I unlocked co-op missions, so let's check them out. Okay, you can match make with others, that's cool. And it's the same levels we've been playing, they just have more enemies now. And most of the players are actually just playing this on auto as well. See, this is what I mean, there's no content to discover here, you don't level up to tackle a challenging boss or whatever, it's just a numbers game, you do the gotchas so you can do more gotcha. Is anyone playing the arena today? Still nothing? Yeah, th this is a match full of bots. Okay, let's try again. 
Oh, hang on, it's matching me. Full lobby this time. Wait, why does it still say NPC on the enemies? Okay, so these are real players, but I'm not directly playing against them. It's like there are two levels here. Like one level, it's my team playing against bots, and then there's a second level, which I assume is where the enemy players are playing against bots of our team. So at the end of the day, you just play against bots anyway. That's the multiplayer. Yeah, no wonder no one was playing this. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm done. I like that the game gave me so much currency that it felt like I could just skip straight to the end game. I think I've seen the end game, maybe there's something else. But I was able to see all of this in a relatively short amount of time. I didn't feel fulfilled by what I saw at all though, because it's all just the same content, but with bigger numbers. I will say though, those tickets at the top were the closest thing I saw to a stamina system, and that number barely went down during these two days. I would spend a ticket to do a mission and then get like five of them as a reward, so at least the game doesn't stop you from playing it if you're into it. Which, hey, if you are, that's okay. Every time I make a video bashing a gacha, there's a bunch of people that come to its defense. And look, we all like bad games. I, I think it's pretty ridiculous to defend them, because you, better than anyone else, should know that you are into the bad game. <laughs> Especially since supporting these games just means you'll get more games like these instead of actual good games. But we all have our guilty pleasures. It's fine, I'm not judging you, I'm just showing this to people that weren't aware of it. This is what Bleach Brave Souls is, and if you're curious, the game is free. You can just go and play it right now. I'd say there isn't much more to do past what you see in the first hour. Like, there's no content here, only gotcha. I'll probably never play this again, but at least now I know, and I had to know, because this might be the only Bleach game release in 2022. That's where we're at. But anyway, I hope you liked my dive into Bleach Brave Souls. If you play the game, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve every time you log in? No judgment here, I'm really curious as to what someone playing this game actively nowadays would be. Is it just, I need to get more characters, or I need to max out my Kenpachi? What are you trying to do? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching, my name's Globku, and I'll see you next time. Bye!